so from the starting we'll be covering like what airflow is and uh, like uh, each and everything about airflow so so the topic for me for today is apache airflow so let's start with it so first of all these are the knowledge etiquette which we which, which everyone has to follow so first of all we need to be punctual and we need to join the session on time like before five minutes and second please like uh, be on the silent mode the, keep your mobile phones on your silent mode and please also share your valuable feedback and please avoid unwanted chit chats sorry i'm sorry for interrupting uh the yes, sure. if you could you lower your input volume a bit uh, yeah sure yeah is it fine now uh, a little lower just a little lower uh, the fine yes yes yeah thank, thank you, you. Yeah, thank you. So let's start. So the agenda for today will be first of all we'll be covering what is Airflow. Next, uh, why to use Airflow, how it works, what are the advantages and disadvantages of Airflow, the screenshot like how Airflow UGUI looks like, and finally with the demo. And the demo will be covering a simple pipeline where we will be like integrating the different technology and tools with uh, like we will be scheduling a job with the Airflow. So this will be our agenda. So let's start. So before starting, just I want to know, is there anyone who has ever like used a uh, Uzi or Apache Nifi or something? Is there is anyone like uh, if uh, he has or he or she has got any advantages, like uh, he's working with some of the pipelines where he is getting the chance to like whatever he is working on, he needs to do the same thing on a regular basis. Uh, anyone like getting these type of... Uh, yeah, I, I have tried on? with uh, Okay. Uh, thanks. So similar to Apache, if you like uh, in the data engineering world, if I talk about, there are some of the circumstances where we need to follow like uh, some of the ways we get uh, in our day-to-day -day life is like the thing we are doing on a single day. Sometimes we need to do the same thing each and every day. Let's say if I give you a scenario, uh, you are like pulling the data from like Kafka or somewhere or any other technology. And uh, in that case, the data you are getting is in a batch format. And the data which you are pulling, that's coming out on a batch, but you need to do the same thing each and every day once you come to your office or anywhere. So for that, that becomes very hectic for a developer to do the same thing for a long period of time to like get retrieve the data from different sources and sinks. And based on the data, you need to go with analysis or whatever you want to integrate or manipulate whatever you want to do. So to reduce these type of duplicacies and uh, to like reduce the dependencies on some of the sim single thing, we came with a solution of Apache Airflow. So what Apache Airflow comes as a solution and how it comes as a solution is we will be going to introduce that particular thing. So what is Apache Airflow? Apache Airflow is basically a like a platform or a tool, if I say, so which, which actually helps you like short scheduling and monitor your workflows. So let's say you are giving you are given a scenario. Let's say you have a hive, and the data is present in your Apache hive, and you need to manipulate the data. You want the data to be extracted out from the hive, and you need to make it pull out in the Spark or any other other processing tool. So this is the one of the thing to get to extract the data on a daily basis. So that's how you can do similar type of things with Apache Airflow. If you do the same thing with Apache Airflow, you don't have to do anything. You just need to create a particular DAG or a scheduler, and that complete thing will be done by Apache Airflow itself. You don't have to do anything. So this is the case we will be we will be talking on this particular. Thing. So this is Apache Airflow. So let's move on. So what's the incubating? Uh, it was like a, it was created by Airbnb, like most of have heard of Airbnb and in 2015 by Maxim. So most of the like uh, in the 2015, like now it's 2020, till 2020 it's been like 6100 plus Fox, the 16K plus GitHub stars, 1000 plus contributors, and most of the companies are using uh, Airflow. Like though we all have other tools like Uzi, Airflow, we have Nifi, we have, and maybe we have more tools, but Apache Airflow is getting a good attraction in between our data engineering world. 
and if you see like we have more than 8000 commuters within 5 years for apache airflow though many of the companies are not using a scheduler any of the scheduler jobs but still we have 8000 plus commuters and 150 plus companies been using out and uh, i'm not considering the small companies i am considering in here only the big companies over there for the apache airflow so this is all for the incubating so what is airflow so airflow basically is uh, we need to what is airflow and how we can trigger a job with the airflow is so with that airflow first of all you need to create a pipeline so what is a pipeline a pipeline is whatever you have to create a step by step whatever you need to manipulate and whatever the flow you will be generating so apache airflow helps you in designing that pipeline in a very easy manner and the, how you can create a pipeline that it will be shown at i will show you in a demo uh, second thing is easy to define our own operators and executors so what does this mean operators and executors okay so let's say you are scheduling a job let's say i in the starting of the like slides and the discussion i talked about hive and spark like you will be getting the data from the hive and like we will be pulling the data from hive to spark so what is this how airflow will come to know that here i am using hive i need to get the data from hive and later when i'm done with my hive part i have the data i know my data is present in the hive and now i want to interact with the, my hive with my spark or any other processing tool so here comes a picture of operators and executors so what operators and executors do is like uh, we have various operators being like predefined in airflow you can say so let's say you have bash operator the sequence operator and many other operators and executors are defined with the help of those operators and executor you just need to create a small pipeline and you need to just create a small pipeline and within that pipeline you just need to define like hive operator i want to integrate whatever the task you will be doing you just need to create a pipeline once you are done with the hive you will be showing like i want to use my spark executor and automatically once my hive operator is done i will be moved towards spark executor so here comes the role of operators and executors so that's how your uh, different technologies come into play and gets easily infected with apache airflow next is a platform to schedule data pipeline what is that so this is something like the scheduling a job like uh, i am coming in the morning at 9 or every time i just want to like extract the data so i don't have to do i don't have to do anything i will be writing a just small dag in that small dag i will be just like uh, me mentioning some of my points which i will be showing you definitely in my demo and those points to schedule your pipeline will be like at what time i want to schedule what all i have to schedule how i want to schedule and what needs to come first and once the first thing is done how my second executor whatever the thing second uh, comes into play how that should be scheduled so that complete pipeline or the scheduler will be defined on your dag which will be uh, like a pipeline which will be de uh, which we will be writing through python and we uh, let me tell you in beginning itself so whatever the pipelines or the scheduling a job or whatever you are writing you just need to create a small python script and that script will be taken as a input by airflow and that will be submitted all nothing we have to do so let's come to next uh, platform to monitor and control data pipelines what does that mean so this means like you have scheduled your job you have done everything but uh, how will you monitor everything like uh, whether the things like uh, whether my data which is been pulling out or whatever i have scheduled is doing correctly or not is there any blockage in between is there any like problem or like there are any exceptions or errors in between in my pipeline so that can also be seen very easily in apache airflow that gives you a clear picture like how what is the error in my like in my job while scheduling in what a type of error i'm getting whether i am able to extract the data fill the manipulation or analysis you are doing are you able to do it or not that will be completely and easily in a easy manner will be written as per in the log files and so lastly it's all about dag so whatever you create whatever you schedule whatever the pipeline you create it's all about dag similarly if we, you have gone through with the spark we have given a we have given a 
like the uh, knowledge on ja uh, Spark. There also we will be was covering like what JAG is. So similar to that, it is a JAG that is called a directed acyclic graph, which tells you what is happening around the picture. So that is all about what is airflow. So let's move on. Uh, uh, just before continue, let me uh, ask if there is any question from your side you can ask. Anyone? Okay, let me continue. Uh, just one question. I mean, what do you exactly mean by uh, like in a pipeline here? Uh, you said like, okay. it is uh, automatically uh, sorry allowing for dynamic pipeline generation. What does it mean? Okay. So pipelines me pipeline here means key whatever you want to do with your pipeline. Let's say you have a small pipeline. As I gave you the example in starting itself, you have your data present in MySQL or somewhere in the database and you want to read the data or let's say uh, the data has been pulling out from any other source like Kafka or somewhere. Okay, you have written a job and where you are doing some, manipul doing some manipulations on your data. Okay, once you are done with the manipulations, you want your extracted data, which is your output for your job, needs to be written to any other database as your final output. So that complete thing, like uh, I'm extracting the data from Kafka, they later I'm doing some manipulation or like uh, I'm providing a schema to my data and I'm doing some filtration. And finally, I'm like uh, exp uh, like uh, exploding the data into a database. That three steps will be uh, um, known as your pipeline. Okay, so like, you know, if, if my pipeline has state management, does also Airflow handle handles it? Sorry, sorry, I didn't get your question. If my pipeline has some state management, right? So does it have like, uh, yeah. pipeline has states state management? Okay. okay. That flow also supports that. Yeah, it supports everything. Like whatever you want to do, you just need, there are multiple executors and operators defined. So whatever the like you have the use case, you need to use an appropriate you operator or executor being defined in an airflow and you can schedule or stage your job easily. So, no, so uh, basically uh, how I think Pranjit question is more towards uh, so for example there is one operator right and from that yeah. operator we want to pass some data to other operator. So how will we do okay. that? Yeah so let's say uh, in the case I am using a hive operator fine mm -hmm. and later sec in second step I am using some like scoop operator or something. So at the when i am staging a pipeline at the last you need to define a downstream or upstream that is called setting up your dependencies of your task in that thing you need to like you need to provide like from which operator that will be like the complete operator will be stored under a task and in that case the task will be the those tasks will be set in your dependencies and you need to provide over there like how you can like what all you want to do like i want to do from hive to scoop so you will be mentioning in your dependency like i will be using first uh, my hive tool of hive operator and then i will be using my scoop operator so that complete pipeline will be given automatically to that operators no actually i think uh, so basically i understand right that you can uh, club in different operator so that is what yeah. is value of the pipeline, right? So you can say that after uh, this particular hive uh, operator has run, right? I can basically use a scoop operator to do that. Okay, to exactly. answer your question, Pranjit, there is no way where you can say, so basically if uh, one operator, right, it will depend on uh, where exactly you are storing the state. Normally what people do is, uh, so for example, there is a hive operator, right? So this hive operator is, uh, uh, what it will do is this hive operator will work and it will same save data maybe some in a some temporary table okay so and then in your scoop job right what you will do is you will basically picking up that, that data from that particular temporary table so if you say that i can uh, save the state in memory so that is not possible okay uh, but whatever uh, way you want to save your state right you have to persist that state uh, somewhere maybe you put it in a kafka topic right and then the next operator can pick it from there Okay, so it is basically for batch execution of jobs, right? Not for the streaming. So Airflow is uh, uh, used for uh, uh, wherever your pipelines are uh, uh, batch pipelines. Okay, so in that case, uh, what you have to do is you have to persist data somewhere and then in your next operator, 
you can just say that uh, pick data from there and and it can speak like data for from different schemas and all like you know, yeah 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 so basically uh, there are different kind of operators which are available okay so i think uh, for most of the uh, existing big data solutions airflow has an operator and then you can also write a custom operator uh, the only limitation is that you have to write those uh, operators in python okay so basically that is the code that they understand but within the python uh, code right you can call your own binaries okay thanks babe thanks ranjit so let's move on so why to use airflow so first of all uh, as told uh, when we when you need to like a schedule a job uh, workflow you need to like use airflow so what this this contains it contains an etl pipelines either your machine learning projects the predictive data pipelines such as fault detection and like scheduling of your job so these all are the thing which is actually possible in airflow and like scheduling your job so what does etl pipelines means extract transform load so this can be easily possible with apache airflow also what should a workflow do well so it should uh, like uh, schedule a job in a workflow plan handle the task failures and monitor performance so how it handles the task failures so whenever like uh, one of the limitation with this point is ki whenever if uh, like you are scheduling a job and uh, let's say you have your uh, job being uh, got raised with an exception in between but this comes with the uh, this comes with the disadvantage of airflow is that you need to like schedule your job uh, means uh, uh, the airflow will Um, take the complete pipeline again, and then in, it will start from the beginning, not from that particular point where you have raised with the exception. So that is one of the disadvantage with Airflow, but it handles your task failures and gives you a proper log for that. And even you can monitor your performance uh, with the Apache Airflow easily on the UI. It is very flexible. Uh, we have a rich user interface. I will be showing you the user interface where you. get a uh, output like uh, we have various output to see like we have graph view we have tree view we have dag view and many other views so that you can see your schedule uh, scheduler easily it is easily extensible allow communication between the task uh, how it uh, communicates between the task and the nodes we will be discussing that in the architecture part the backfill control and the efficiency like so if you see the uh, image we have a similar cli as we have in the spark and other cli so it is very efficient we had don't find any like disadvantages or limitations with the cli so it is very flex flexible to use what do you mean so these flexible? are the data sorry okay, uh, sorry yeah, i have one question right uh, sorry uh, go ahead go ahead yeah like you know um, i was just asking what is backfill control exactly in the previous slide sorry what is backfill uh, control okay so backfill control means like uh, uh, if i give you a scenario uh, let me tell you with a scenario here uh, you have a job schedule and let's say you need to stop it for a minute and you need to restart it again so that seems here in that picture that seems to find it as an extra task okay so in that particular thing what you can do is ki if you want to like uh, do similar type of thing so it controls your task is uh, airflow controls your task and with the back like uh, you need to like run a job where you want to start it from any of the particular thing you can start that particular thing and you can control that task like i want to run this task or not so this you can control from your own side okay so basically uh when you backfill is used okay so for example uh, let's say you are in uh, in one of your project right you are processing a lot of events okay and then these dags uh, so normally how they run is uh, because they run on a particular schedule right so so let's say you said that this dag will run from uh, let's say 10 o'clock every day okay and it will pick the events right from this date to this date okay now what happens is that uh, there was some problem in uh, one of your iot devices right and uh, you uh, you came to know that uh, okay so uh, the data was no not coming from these devices okay and i need to backfill that data okay now how will you run your dag against this backfill data right because your dags have already moved ahead okay so let's say you came to know about this problem uh, maybe uh, a week 
look uh, ahead, right? So you say that, okay, the problem has occurred on maybe let's say 20th of uh, this month, right? While you are already on 27th, okay? Now Airflow provides you a flexibility, right? Where you can backfill your data, okay? So you can say that your DAGs, okay, should basically uh, start running in a backfill mode where you say that it should start from 20th, okay? And try to reprocess that data. So can we like uh, so the current flow and the like you know flow that so is it like you know two different flows get started or or like how does it exist like you know uh, so basically the job right it depends on uh, what is your business logic right so if uh, you are let's say you are calculating aggregate on the basis of uh, last seven days okay so so the dag that you are running okay uh, it will if if you uh, just uh, run it in a perspective which is basically for this day okay your calculations may not be correct okay so what you have to do is you have to basically restart processing from uh, from the back date because only then you will get the correct aggregates correct but if your job is like uh, you want to basically publish a daily detail okay where you are not dependent on your, the 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 historical data okay then you can run it independently right so basically this is uh, this is depending on your business logic that how you would like to backfill and uh, run those jobs okay uh, shall i move ahead? yeah no i have one question right so so basically this cli right uh, 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 with airflow okay so you can do yeah. a lot of uh, uh, things with cli right so even backfill jobs can be run only using cli so uh, mm -hmm. but if i want to point my cli to a different server right so can i do that mm, actually i haven't tried that uh, okay. uh, but uh, i'll uh, yeah sure sure thank you okay thank you So these are the examples of some of the DAGs which I've displayed. So if you can see, uh, so over here, so this is called an operators. So if you can see, I have written a bash operator where I have written some of the IDs, the bash command, the parameters and the DAG. So what does this mean is ki I want to run a bash operator. This takes the input like what is my ID? That means I want to run, uh, that is in here, it is written as templated. That means I want to run a templated command, which I have templated a DAG, which I have created by my own. So this is thing. So here, if I should return templated, so there must be something called templated defined. And within the templated, my DAG would be defined over there. So I will be showing you in that my demo, how it gets defined. Second is called bash command. So that is called templated command. So there should be something called, a, uh, I have written a command in my templated DAG where it will take the template command from the DAG and it will keep on passing to this operator and it will continue on its own task. The parameters I have passed and finally the DAG which it will initiate. Similarly, in the second one, if I look over here, similarly, this is the bash operator where my ID is a print date. What does this task ID means? When I will be scheduling the job, this task ID will be known as print date. So if I want to like see the logs or whatever the thing, so the name or the uh, ID of that particular operator for this flow will be printed and going over to this printed, I can see my logs, whether it is like okay or whatever you want to check. And so these all are the commands. Thus finally, if you see the big one, so what I have done here is like I am running a scoop or bash operator where I am like using a scoop job and I am like exporting the data from like I'm executing a scoop job and later with the scoop job, if you can see, I'm doing something, some aggregations on my hive part and like once this complete thing is done, I'm writing a finished task where I'm like completing, passing my complete DAG and here my complete DAGs come into play. So these are some of the DAGs, how this gets generated into Apache Airflow and how you need to prepare an end-to-end DAG, I will be showing you in the demo. So this will be only covered in the demo, I will be showing you that. Uh, so this is the architecture, how the job initiates. So we don't have much in the architecture. So the thing is, ki, uh, there, if I tell you about the architecture, how it initiates in the backend. So first of all, a user, uh, like uh, any of the users, schedules a job or manages a DAG, sorry, 
and with that DAG, the Airflow web server, which you see over here, it stores the DAG, the metadata, in its metadata database. So this uh, now, once the data is present in my metadata database, so this scheduler, which comes into play, pick up, picks up the, that uh, scheduler, the scheduled job, and it distributes that work, whatever the data is present or whatever I have defined in my DAG, over salary or rabbit MQ. So if I talk about salary or rabbit MQ, what it do is key here that salary and rabbit MQs comes into the play within the scheduler. So salary, what it salary do is salary is used to manage your nodes and this rabbit MQ is used for the communication between the workers and all. Later, once my job is scheduled, this worker pick up the task and it, uh, whenever it is done, it just gives back the like whatever the result is to the airflow GUI. So this is the architecture. So what are the pros and cons? The pros is the advantages for this. Uh, we have a good user interface. You can like see your DAG logs easily. It's in a very hierarchical manner and whatever the code runs, even the code which you will be showing, uh, sorry, submitting to your airflow, you can even see that code in your panel, like which uh, code is being running out, which DAG you are running out. And also you can like rerun your historical task that is very easy to do with the uh, airflow and the independent scheduler. It comes with its own scheduler and it also supports multiple DAGs. So if you have not a single, you have multiple DAGs, like one of the DAG is doing something and then it will like, we have more DAGs doing something else or something else, we can do that easily with the airflow. And also it has an active open source community. So the chat rooms are very active, even the new learners who are like very new to airflow can easily answer their queries within span of hours. So these were the advantages. So what are the disadvantages? So disadvantages for these are the task optimization. So uh, in the case of Airflow, it becomes very massive. Let's say you have like a bigger uh, cluster and you have been multiple jobs running out in your Airflow. So sometimes it becomes very unclear to like manage your multiple tasks, which has been running for your multiple schedules. And it becomes very massive into the pipeline. And you sometimes become very unclear to find out which DAG is being working out with which things. So no direct dealing with the task. We don't have any like uh, doesn't deal with the data set or input. So like say you have been pulling the data from the database and you are doing something with the airflow. But once if the, your database is lost with the, within the airflow, so it is very harder to restore. And also it uh, cannot start the task independently, but picks or picks, uh, picks up the task flexibly. So it is very difficult. So these are the disadvantages which I found. And also one of the disadvantages which I told you earlier itself in the within the airflow is that so if your jobs get failed in between, you need to like rerun your job. It starts the job from the start from the initial stage, not from the like whatever the task which is got which got failed. So these were the disadvantages. So these are the UI screenshots. So this is a DAG view. So these are the DAGs which is being like which is being displayed on your local or somewhere you on the server. So this is called DAG. So each and every DAG has some of the mechanism on the backend. So how each and every DAG looks like and interiorly. So this is a preview. So once you initiate the job, this view comes into play. So this is the view where you can clearly see like whether you have your job running successfully or failed or something. So these are the variables being defined. So these green means your task is running very fine. So if your like a job gets failed in between within that particular, like uh, if I show you, so I told you what are the operators are defined, like uh, I showed you in the beginning, like the print date and all. So these are the things which is, which you can see as an ID, the offer one, the offer two and the conditions. So this is a DAG and the graph view. Let's say uh, I showed you a DAG if I show you again. So here I'm running a scoop job, scoop incremental. And second, I'm running a hive job, which name is this. So uh, hive this, hive partitioning loading. This is the task ID. And for this, the task ID was scoop incremental. So if I come over here, so you can see the graph view is, okay, first of all, my scoop will run, then it will give the start to the hive. And the finally, the final task will be completed. So that is how the graphical view of a particular airflow will run and such is how your schedule, the job is getting scheduled in within your airflow. 
so this is the code view which you need to write and submit it to the airflow so this is the thing so first of all you need to like import the jobs and uh, like uh, the diagram whatever you want to show the argue some default arguments the dag and whatever you want to do so this is the code view so if i show you a demo uh, before the demo do I have do and even have any questions Please yes so basically how do you uh, how do you import these dags right so if i want to create a new dag uh, mm -hmm. i can do it from ui right no you can't do it from ui yes okay yeah so okay. that's what i'll show you so mm -hmm. this is the code which i have submitted to the airflow this is the final job so if you want to manipulate if you want to do some more that you want to do manipulations some manipulations so there is a local directory which takes uh, uh, which airflow takes so within your airflow directory you have something called dags so within your dags folder you need to like submit all your dags so you need to submit your python scripts so this is the code which uh, this airflow takes and whatever you are seeing on your ui that gets displayed with that python script so how you will be submitting this job is so before that you need to like first of all start a web server for your airflow that runs on a default portal port of 8080 uh, once it starts uh, yeah so my airflow web server is started that means my local host 8080 is started now once your web server is started you need to like run a scheduler so which schedulers which uh, schedules your job so now i want to run my airflow scheduler now my scheduler is run and this is my code where what i am doing is so we have the steps to write a airflow dag before like show you the running task or something i will tell you how you will be writing a dag so we need to complete write a complete dag the write a complete airflow dag that is being considered into five steps so what are those first of all you need to import the modules whatever you want to import so this is your first step second the default arguments whatever you want to pass default arguments can be consist of like owner depends on the past or not whether it is true so if you, i have mentioned false that means it doesn't have any dependency with the past jobs and in that case i have written false the start date whatever you want to write the email id the email and failure so here you will be like uh, passing your uh, mail id and if you will say it as true so if uh, the job gets like failed so you will get your mail on your particular email id which you have mentioned also on the email on retry how many time it should get re it should retry on failing and what is the time it should take for retry like uh, once my job is failed it will take after the delay of 5 minutes it will start retrying my job so this is one of the default argument this is the second step third it instantiate a dag what does that means is you need to like write a dag like how my dags should work so within your dag object you need to like pass your uh, name of your job whatever it will be shown in the ui these default arguments which you have passed over here and the third is how it will get scheduled so here i have written it is only for the day days one that means the time delta for that in schedule interval will be one this was the third step that is called instantiate a dag now the task if you see here these all are my tasks this was my modules which i have imported these are the this is the second step the default arguments this is my dag and for fourth step is uh, like writing your task what you want to do so in this job what i am doing is uh, my task id will be print date i am writing a bash command just date like it will print a date and uh, the second it will go into sleep for 5 seconds it will retry for the three times and this is a templated command i was talking about so what does this mean is it will the task id will be templated that means the name of the job will be templated i want to run the bash command as my templated command that means this will be given to my bash command so what is this these are the variable uh, these are the built in variables of your airflow that means this is the airflow execution date this is the execution date and it will add 7 days more like if today is like uh, 20 so it will add 27 27 as a date so this is one of my job and the parameters 
so the parameters will be like i want to pass the parameters that parameter i pass in anything you want to write you can write over here so these are the tasks you want to define you want to do with your airflow next i told you the sets upstream so this is set upstream one of the thing is also called downstream so what does this test set upstream means so what it will do is it will first run this job on the top of this upstream it will run a t1 job like first of all my t1 job will run on the top of that my t2 will run so just that this means the same like i told you there will be a final thing which will get manipulated how my dag will run so first of all this will run on the top of this this will run this is how my dag is defined so if i show you in the like ui yeah so if i show you the job name was knowledge yeah so as you can see my dag name was knowledge demo so there should be something with the name this knowledge demo on my ui so if i show you so here is my knowledge demo so for that what i want to do is ki i will need to on this dag and here if you can see is ki it is showing the schedule for one day uh, schedule for one day this so if i show you here Mm, yeah so here i have mentioned days equals to one so that means my job will be scheduled only for day, one day not for more days so if i show you the dag now i need to just go inside this dag yeah so if you see like my yeah so these all things which i have mentioned in my like task so first of all it will do a print date second the template date and the sleep so these all were the task ids which i have mentioned the print date the sleep the template this so this is the same thing which is being shown in the ui so now what this dag is doing is see this is the log if i want to see the log i can just click on view log and you can see here yeah so this is the output friday april 17 this so if i show you the date i have mentioned here is this so it's show it is showing me the date like what is the date for today so here you can clearly see it is displaying me that date april 17 so this is the first task so if i refresh yeah so it is currently on hold uh, view log so what does this gray means so if i should if i give back this gray means my job is still in queue that means it is not in the process like how my jobs get run so this template you mind still in do once the uh, like the condition is fulfilled it will come into play so this is one of the demo i want to show you the another demo which i want to show you is a complete pipeline where i won't be running it just the case i will be showing you is you is this yeah so this is the thing i will be also showing you how it gets failed and what happens if my job gets failed and how the exceptions get arise so whatever i am doing in my pipeline here is uh, i am reading the data from kafka okay so within my kafka this is the normal code this doesn't have to take anything with airflow so this is simple so spark job so this is taking my uh, reading the data from this topic and like it is like doing some manipulation and it is storing the data in my mysql table once my data is been my uh, table is like present in my mysql table within this table what i will do is ki i will create a table and now my data is present in this table and if i show you my spark job airflow job now so what i will be doing is before this scoop job i will be creating a scoop job with my own spark uh, like a bash shell nothing with the airflow now i have given a name now this name will be given this uh, scoop job will be given to scoop and now this scoop job will execute automatically on a scheduler with the, by its own i don't have to do like manually like uh, my data is getting on a batch process my data is getting on a batch and whatever the data is been streaming uh, i don't want to do it manually like each and every batch is coming out i do have to do same thing with my job 
so what i have done is ki this scoop command i have presented over here so what it will do is ki already my job is executed uh, sorry my job is created the airflow task is to do is ki it will execute the job automatically once i will start my dab so the this uh, command this uh, scoop job will be taken by airflow and automatically it will hit the scoop and this it will take pull out from that scoop job and it will run automatically within the scheduler so once my scoop job is done now it comes the case of hive so what i am doing with hive so let me show you once so with the spark hive what i am doing is i am reading the data from the hive is my sql table and now whatever the data i am getting i am like writing some of the data and i am doing some of the manipulations in spark hive table i am integrating spark with hive and with this hive table i am doing some manipulations but what we need to do it as it will be i am doing some dynamic partitions or everything so this is my scoops hive job where i am like uh, enabling the dynamic partition for my hive table i am like uh, uh, setting up some dependencies the partition mode and the dynamic partitions so this i don't have to do it from my end i have just uh, given it to my airflow job and this job will whenever the job will be integrated it will for each batch it will do this dynamic partitions and the data which is being pulling out from this job scoop job this data will be get inserted into this partitioning table over here in the hive and once this job is done it will be completed this is my final task that means first of all i will be running my scoop job once my scoop job is completed i will be running my hive job and finally the final task that is my dab ends so this is my another job so if i show you in the ui yeah so this was the job so so this was completed and somehow in the high partitioning it was giving me some error so if i show you my job was getting like populated in this my scoop was running fine but once it was integrating it was in the high part it was throwing me some error so how this exceptions can be seen like what error i have seen is this so here if you can see there is no such file directory called hive so there is some dependencies issues with my hive i am still working on that so that is all about airflow so i am sorry if you have any questions you can ask so one question right so basically in this case right you were running everything on your local okay uh, But, uh, the spark job babish yeah yeah right but actually in case of uh, our actual uh, pipeline right uh, we would yeah. have different clusters yeah, exactly right so, yeah so this is like, like if you want to run a different service how you will be manipulating that that comes yes. a question i am still yeah. working on it sir okay okay because uh, see this spark right so right now you are just executing the code on uh, your spark but normally yeah. right you have to uh, do a spark submit to uh, run that on spark so so that could be a good uh, a learning right that how do we run it on different clusters yes yeah, sir okay sure i'll work on it sir babu sir sure to be i'll get back to you yeah thanks devyash it was pretty informative okay thanks a lot babu sir mm, is there anyone who has any question just i have one small question uh, in the python script can there be multiple dags in one file uh these dags or the task you are saying uh, no uh, the ultimate dag which you have created yeah so this is one of the disadvantage you can't like do multiple dags in a single thing so you need to do like if you want to do you need to create multiple dags but in different python scripts you can't do that in like a single script either yeah. the case is you can create multiple script but uh, the scripts whenever you are defining a final task you can define those dags within that file like i want to run that this dag from that particular place so that okay. you can do okay so yeah. in that case we need to uh, mean schedule the files with which you want to call exactly you need to import the files the scripts okay, okay. okay. thanks 
Thank you, Vansh. Mm. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Vansh.